Oh my gosh, I am excited for this one. This episode here today has been about six months in the making because I got hooked up with this TIG welding machine here. This is the Canaweld 281 Pulse. This machine was designed and released to be one of Canaweld's higher end TIG welding machines. It's got a ton of crazy options on it and I've had the pleasure of being able to use it for the past six or so months now. I've got a lot of messages on my videos from people asking how do I like it and basically what do I think after using it for a little while now. So today we're gonna go over all that stuff. But first let's check out this machine here. This is the welding machine that I basically started my YouTube channel with. This is the Canaweld 201 Pulse D. I've literally used this machine on my channel for years now. This is Canaweld's entry level TIG welding machine and this little thing is a beast. It's an air cooled or gas cooled unit and it is absolutely bomb proof and it does incredible work. The size of this machine is absolutely tiny. It fits anywhere in your shop. And after upgrading some of the accessories over the years to things that I prefer, everybody has seen this machine on my channel for years now doing all kinds of great work, or at least I think it's great work. So it's been really cool to compare this new high-end TIG welding machine from Canaweld to the original machine that I started my YouTube channel using back in the day. So what are the differences between these two machines? Let's take a look at the 281 Pulse here. So the 281 is a fully water-cooled machine. It has a ton of crazy options for your settings built into it, as well as some great versatility to customize these settings specifically for whatever job you are TIG welding. Personally, if you're using it in the shop, I've primarily used it for welding aluminum. I definitely have done a ton of stainless steel with it as well, but you've seen it in many episodes on my channel. I've been able to throw down a ton of nice stuff on aluminum with this thing. I gotta say that having the extra amperage that I can crank this thing up, it gives me a lot of freedom to weld whatever I wanna weld. And to be honest, this thing is handled so smoothly for whatever project I've done, I haven't even turned it up all the way yet. Now the entire thing right out the box came with all kinds of accessories as well as a foot pedal. I did an original demonstration with this machine as well as all the stock accessories it came with in the first episode where I reviewed this thing. And you can see that right out of the box with the stock accessories, I got some pretty good results with everything I did. Typically when I set up a new machine, I have to fuss around with the settings a little bit to get things just the way that I like it. But I gotta say with this machine, it was pretty easy to zero in on exactly what I liked and getting it to run exactly the way I want. Even TIG welding some stainless steel with the stock torch and consumables that this thing came with, I was able to set up and do some pretty decent work right out of the box again, very happy with the results. Now I talked about it in the first episode I did on this machine, but one gripe that I had as far as an accessory that I didn't really like or wasn't very fond of, it was the torch setup. It's this setup right here. The entire thing was pretty bulky for my liking personally. It's definitely quite heavy compared to what I'm used to and it doesn't really have the dexterity for the type of projects that I wanna be doing in here. So the kind folks at CK Worldwide hooked me up with this water-cooled torch line here and just simply switching out the torch to something that I prefer, this has been a huge upgrade to my setup. Using the lightweight torch here, I've had much more freedom and comfort for whatever type of job that I am doing. Using the original torch was absolutely fine as far as performance. It stayed nice and cool while I was welding with it. It didn't heat up and burn my hand. But like I said, it didn't quite move and have the dexterity that I prefer in a torch. I definitely like something that's a little more lightweight, kind of like what you're looking at here. But getting a torch that I could upgrade the machine with swapped over no problems. It was super simple. Using some smaller consumables and a stubby gas lens kit, I was up and running with this thing literally in seconds. Now, as far as settings go, there's a ton of really cool stuff that you can play with to customize it specifically for whatever type of job setup you are doing. You can change the shape of the sine wave when you are welding aluminum. However, I have to say that even welding with the basic square wave, this machine has been able to do some incredible work with thick material as well as thin material on this setting. It has a ton of options as far as adjusting the different pulse settings. And if you're welding some thin aluminum, using the pulse settings is a lot of fun to play with because it keeps things so controlled and so precise. You can see here, I'm set up to weld some outside corner work with some aluminum here. It's really easy to get this machine set up nicely and keep things nice and cool as I am doing so. Now, one of my favorite things about this machine is the ability to store your settings in different memory banks. That's right, using the original 201 Pulse D machine. Every time you wanted to switch to different settings or a different type of metal, you had to do it manually. With the 281 Pulse machine, all you do is you save your stuff into a memory bank, you can call it up at any time. So for example, if you have your settings set up for a really specific type of welding with aluminum, you can save it right here. If you wanna do some different stuff with stainless steel or whatever, you can store it in a different memory bank and you can recall these at any time. All of your settings are stored safely inside of each one. It cannot get any easier than that. 
As far as other common settings that you might play with, you can adjust your frequency to the parameters that you see here. You definitely get a lot of room to play with the frequency setting on this machine. It's awesome. Now, another thing at the moment I do wish was a little bit different about this machine is I do genuinely wish that I had a little bit more adjustability with the balance on this machine. You can see that when I'm adjusting the balance to weld aluminum, I only have a small window that I can actually adjust. I do wish that I could change this with a little bit more freedom as I actually change this setting pretty frequently while I'm welding. I've talked about it on multiple demonstrations on my channel before, but when I'm welding thin aluminum, I like running a little more positive side of the cycle, so I will crank that up a little higher. And when I'm gearing up with more amperage to weld some hotter stuff, I'll actually turn the positive side down to run a little more negative. So with the balance setting being a little bit limited at the moment on this machine, I do find this is a bit of a drawback personally again. I do wish that I had a little more freedom to adjust this as I kind of see fit for the different jobs that I'm doing. But like I said, I have used these settings to weld all kinds of stuff on my channel here so far and it has welded just absolutely beautifully. Beautiful, very beautiful. Hey Siri, is beautifully a word? Yeah, it's a word. All right, go away Siri, I'm done. No, 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 no. Now I've had multiple people ask me in the comments for my videos of the two machines that we see here. If I was getting my own setup for my shop here, which one would I pick? This is a really tough question. Like I said, the original 201 Pulse D that I started my channel with over three years ago is an absolute workhorse. Even having limited amperage to work with on this machine, I have been able to make this thing handle some thicker material no problem. A little bit of preheating, a little extra time at the start to let something warm up. I've done all kinds of projects and made out just fine using this machine. However, with that machine, having no water cooler is definitely a bummer. Canaweld, if you're watching, make a 201 Pulse D with a water cooler. That would be an awesome option. So for now, this new machine being fully water cooled is an absolute treat. No matter how much welding you do with this thing, that torch staying cool in your hand, there is something really important to be said about that. But honestly, I guess if it came down to me spending my own money on a setup like this, the one thing that would make this really tough is the giant price gap in between these two units. Again, look at what you can get up and running with right out of the box with the Canaweld 201 Pulse D. I've had hundreds of students through my online TIG welding program who've wanted to get started on a budget. And I have to say that on this subject, this machine absolutely takes the case on that one. You get a full setup right out of the box and it will leave you with a little bit of cash left over so you can make any kind of upgrades to accessories that you want. Now the 281 does come with a higher price tag, but I gotta say it has been an absolute blast to see the good work that comes out of this machine. You definitely get your money's worth as far as the quality of work that this machine does. After I got familiar with navigating my way through the different menus on the machine and being able to call up settings from previous memory banks that I've saved from a while ago, this kind of stuff is a huge bonus to this machine. So obviously it depends on what you are looking for as far as machinery in your shop. Both of these machines have been absolutely reliable. I've had no problems with either one of these. If you're looking for something to get you going with learning how to TIG weld, I absolutely recommend the 201 Pulse D. That's probably your machine. It's easy on your wallet. It absolutely kicks ass. The 281, like I said, is definitely more expensive. But again, like I said, it does great work. And right out of the box, you have the freedom to basically weld whatever you want. Check out the website to Cano Weld in the description below. The link that is there tells them that I sent you. So do me a favor, click on that link, check out their stuff and see if there's anything that might catch your attention. Window shopping is always awesome. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.